I can't hear you, Amy. There we go. There we go. Now we can. Oh, okay. Great. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, Amy. Go ahead. Could we switch the SIG security update with the SIG storage? I have to leave at half past the hour. Um, and their update looks much more uh, intensive than ours. I just want to make sure I get. I think we should be able to do that. I'm checking in to be able to see who's joined for that one. Um, I'm not sure who's doing that one. Yeah, I don't. Charles, that... Sorry, go ahead. Hello. Hello. So, Liz, we've had a request to be able to move things around a little bit. Um, uh, we've got SIG security up uh, first, but request to be able to move SIG storage just a little bit. I think that should be fine. I cannot hear Helps you. I unmute myself. I really don't mind what order we do things in. What, whatever order suits people best. All right, I will drag storage up to the top. You are now first. Great. Game on. I think I'm in quite a noisy wee work, so uh, I'm going to keep putting myself on mute. Shout if I forget to unmute myself. All right, and the agenda has been updated as well so that everyone remembers what happened here. Good fun. There was also the question of um, Cortex, whether or not we want to wait for SIG observability or so maybe we can put that on at the end to the agenda. Sure thing. And I'm hearing that my audio was fairly quiet, so I'm going to poke at like some settings over in here. But Liz, whenever yeah. you want to be able to put. Amy, I'm going to guess people have not often accused you of being quiet. I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> I suspect this is Zoom being helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, that might be better. Um, yeah, we're three minutes past. Oh, God, everyone's having Zoom problems this morning. Excellent. Lovely. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yes. Absolutely. Um, uh, I will put that any other items of business on the bottom. How's that? How are we doing for TSC members? I see Shang. Uh, I know Alexis is on a plane and Brendan was going to be joining us later on. And I have a feeling Joe might have said he had a conflict. Is that right? Yes, Joe did say he had a conflict. So we've got a, a, a lower crowd than normal, but these are all recorded. Um, so no, no quorum, no votes, but we can continue. All right, should we get started? Yes, let's do it. Okay, so, oh, my windows are broken, right. So happy new year, everyone. Normal uh, policies apply around antitrust and meeting logistics and you're all very welcome. Uh, and shall we move straight on into the SIG updates? So storage, Erin, is it you gonna go first? Yep, thank you for accommodating that. Um, so we're continuing the work that we started last year, um, trying to finish up this uh, database 
storage landscape uh, white paper. In addition, um, the performance and benchmarking is ongoing. Um, probably one of the bi biggest projects that we're undergoing that's going to take time um, and you know, asking for certainly the wider CNCF storage community to help with is this use case library. Uh, we have kind of gone back and forth about how that should be formatted to not pick winners. Um, we're very cognizant that we don't want to include anything in there that says, you know, we are endorsing this technology over that technology. So we're making sure that we're trying to be sufficiently vague with it actually still being useful. So the use case library will be, if you want to set up a database that's distributed in Kubernetes, here's how you would go about it. Here are some examples. Here's what is in the CNCF already. Um, here are things you need to think about. Um, so there were a lot of requests at KubeCon from various customers um, for something specifically like this. How do I get started? Um, and, and get that working and are there examples. So that first example, uh, Luis Pablon has put together and we'll just continue to iterate um, on each one of those examples as we go. Uh, the sandbox proposal template, uh, we came up with a questionnaire and then I also came up with kind of a template, um, you know, really interested in collaborating with the other SIGs and the TOC on, you know, locking that down, uh, especially as we have voted I believe it's been approved to, to move to three to support Sandbox that it will definitely give us an opportunity to make sure we're all on the same page. We're looking at the same criteria. And I think it will help projects understand what is expected of them, you know, coming into the project itself. And then the last thing is, is Dragonfly. Uh, sadly, it kind of fell off our radar for a while and then the holidays happened. So we're, we're jumping back and making sure that we're giving that the, the proper due diligence. So that is the SIG from, that is the update from SIG storage. Are there any questions? Um, one question, and I, this might really be a question for Quinton, but I, I, and it might also be my failing memory. I have a feeling that he's got Dragonfly as in scope for SIG runtime. Does that make any sense? And it might be. This is an interesting thing because there's a lot of projects that can kind of span more than one SIG. So, you know, do I don't think we have a formal process or agreement about how we do that. Do we do we first evaluate it and say it doesn't belong here, it belongs in, you know, SIG runtime, or is it something the two SIGs need to both have firm agreement on? I, I think there's a lot of overlap on some of these things that we can't like definitively say it only belongs in this SIG and we don't need any other input. So I, I'd love to get some feedback from everyone about how they think we should handle that. I think it is an open point of discussion. In most of the SIG charters, they're what they'd considered projects that are sort of in scope or, um, or home base would be that SIG. What was called out in those, was signaled in those charters. I don't I hesitate to use language other than signaled because because of this discussion here. And clearly they do. I mean, clearly the the projects have a, multiple capabilities and which capability has the heaviest gravity and makes the most sense to be in one SIG versus the next is, um, I think, that's, I would think that we might all be able to readily agree that, um, that the all, that, that the, the wrong answer here is that they they're, they are confined, they, they stay within one and are confined to discussions within that one because that just, outside yeah. of that, there's probably discussion about. I agree. I, and maybe it's just as part of the template, depending on if they're sandbox or not, there's, there's a place that other SIGs, you know, reviews and a summary of that review and um, for sure. I mean, I think as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of cross SIG collaboration on these projects, um, especially in the Kubernetes landscape. Nothing just belongs in one place anymore. So yeah, I I'm totally agree with that, Lee. So. But Aaron, I have to say this publicly because if it hasn't been obvious from my interest in the effort that you guys are giving to refining the sandbox uh, entrance criteria, I just kudos for picking up that work and trying to help clarify that process. And I'm looking forward to 
so, so we're reviewing across SIGs so that we can tr try to be somewhat consistent because because it, because it's um, yeah because because I think that consistency will help. I do too. Thanks. Right. Yeah, big plus one on that. And um, am I right in thinking that we do now have a scheduled regular SIG kind of chair meeting? I can't remember what the name for that is, but is that now actually scheduled, Amy? Not yet, but that is coming. So, shortly. Great. And yeah, big plus one on the appreciation for the efforts that are going into improving these processes. Um, fantastic. Okay. I'm reading Matt's chat real quick. Um, I would suggest projects don't need more meetings, but dealing with multiple SIGs. I, I do agree with that, Matt. I don't feel like every project should bounce through every SIG and have to go through all the things together. So I think that's really up to us to, to get our crap together and not make projects go through several of the same processes. So let's, let's work on how we can reduce the amount of paperwork um, for the projects for sure. So thank you. Maybe we can try to sort of find one home, like a sort of home SIG for each project, but that SIG might say, actually, it makes sense in this particular occasion. Clearly there's a ton of overlap with this other SIG, so we'd like their input. Yeah. Right. Well, it might be even planning ahead and inviting that other SIG ahead of time, you know, and so they yeah. do one presentation and everyone that needs to be there from the various SIGs is there and you know, they don't have to bounce from one to the next. I'm, I'm open to suggestions, so. Great. All right, well, with that in mind, Dragonfly perhaps should be a kind of collaboration between storage and the new runtime. Yeah, so it'll right. be the guinea pig, sadly. <laughs> so hopefully we don't screw it up too bad. Okay. <laughs> Great, all right, so who's next? Which thing is next? Security, I believe. Dan, hi. Over to you. Hi, uh, good morning. Is uh, Sarah Allen was uh, scheduled to present. Uh, I am stepping in because uh, we're going uh, early. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, run through our update. Um, so high level, um, we've got a few more members. Uh, it was 53 last time we, we checked in. So uh, you know, just, just a you know, small bump there. Um, as we head into 2020, we're going to uh, be returning to a alternating week um, presentation and working meeting schedule. We have quite a few uh, you know, subgroups and projects that we're, we're working through. Uh, so we dedicate some of the sort of allocated SIG time to getting some of that, that stuff done. Um, we've been doing some, some really interesting work around uh, supply chain future security and uh, you know, have quite an extensive catalog of um, supply chain attacks that we've, um, you know, been, been curating. Uh, along with that, uh, you know, this effort uh, and, and um, PR 304 uh, land some of the definitions. So if you're interested in the space of the supply chain security, uh, we've begun to put down the, the definitions and categorize some of the uh, areas and align with, um, you know, the work that, that's been done before, MITRE, and stuff like that. Uh, and finally, and this will, will carry us through the next couple uh, update slides, uh, um, you know, we have some updates to the security process. We've aligned with um, Liz and Joe, and, and um, if we can go into the intake process. Um, so, you know, here, uh, you know, we have defined and uh, ratified the security assessment uh, intake process. Um, if you know you're looking at the schedule, um, you know the, the prioritization uh, number three is actually where you know things start today. Um, you know, in, in the bootstrap process, uh, we kind of jump to uh, the CNCF projects, and then um, you know uh, one two are you know really you know what, what we expect as we get to steady state, where um, you know we have. Uh, you know, an existing corpus of, of things we need to, to go. Uh, security is never done, and we have to go back and make sure that we're, uh, you know, getting everybody up to date, and we have that, that ongoing context. Um, so that's our, our uh, aligned intake process. And then uh, if you go to our, our third slide, um, you know, you can go and 
uh, look at uh, our, our project board uh, that we maintain and um, you know, we, we have uh, uh, Spire coming up uh, in February. So we're really excited to, um, to uh, you know, take in Spire and um, you know, we'll, we'll have a share out in um, coming months on, uh, on that uh, assessment. That's all for six I have, I have question? one question on that um, intake process where it says, Please. No, number two, maybe it's a wording thing, CNCF security audited projects within a year of audit. Is that, a, is that the right word? <laughs> is, that, does that, is that a complete sentence? Um, it, it is. Uh, um, so the, my understanding is that in, um, in a year, uh, projects are, are invited to, to come back and you know, re-up. That's the uh, spirit of that. Oh, uh, okay. So the, right? <laughs> right. For the next year. Right. For the next year. That's what I'm saying. In the bootstrap, you kind of you know, gloss over those first two. Uh, and then as we get to steady state, um, you know, those are uh, our priorities are going to be uh, you know, making sure that we have uh, you know, in the existing projects, you know, a great sense of the security. Okay. Any other questions for SIG security? My only oh. question was to your wording you just mentioned there, Liz, is, is it a year within the last audit because the audit may not happen when they go in? Why is it, why isn't it a year into acceptance of the project or something like that? Is it just like audit guidelines because they overlap? Just curious. So uh, you know, here there's a, uh, a difference between the project audits and the security assessments, and um, you know, this is Six Securities um, intake process and and how we uh, go through that, and not necessarily um, you know the broader auditing of. Um, and you know the, the um, security validation that you know the CNCF ultimately does when it intakes a uh, project. Does that right. answer the question. I'm not sure that I did. Um, so you know, on the year anniversary, and this this is uh, uh, I'm you know standing in for Sarah. This is her. Um, you know, uh, she's the the co-chair lead on this. So um, you know, my understanding is that you know. On, on an annual basis, we're uh, you know revisiting uh, all of the, the projects that we've we've intake to make sure that they're uh, up to date and that we have a uh, clear sense of, of where they stand. Okay. Yeah, that answers my question. Great. Okay. Thank you, Dan. I think we turn to SIG app delivery next. Who do we have? Yeah. I'm Hi. Here. Okay, from the app SIG app delivery, um, you can find the details and some links in uh, the slides later on. We also started to have now our template available for projects uh, to review. So we took existing due diligence reports and um, used this as a basis. The only thing we really added is future plans for the projects that was missing in some of the due diligence documents we saw. So what do projects want to do? Uh, work on going forward. Active reviews right now are on Argo and the operator framework. Argo is already in a good shape uh, to the document and we'll have a follow-up detailed discussion with the Argo team. So I think we can, uh, by the next meeting, provide some good progress there and also assume that we make good progress on the operator framework project review. So the whole idea is that most of it is self um, explanatory so that the projects can fill it out because obviously we can, uh, as the chairs, can do all the review work. Um, the next topic was the operator framework, um, the operator definition. Uh, this is work in progress that we started. I think the bigger question here is, uh, this was a request from the TUC, what do we exactly want to do there? Because technically there is a definition of an operator in the Kubernetes documentation. Is it we should review it 
um, what it is or is it more regarding a based practice document, how to best build them? I think that's just, just an open question, but what do we really want to go there? So I would just want to avoid to use uh, people's time to just go in circles on this. I like guess we were discussing about, I think it was more than a month ago, we started to work on that doc and the more we were like getting documents together, we were like, oh, I think the thing already exists to some extent, at least the definition work. Uh, what is a bit of discussion right now is uh, what the, the core as folks initially had, uh, the whole maturity model, capability model, these kind of things, how things should be structured, which might go more in the direction of uh, maybe a best practice, how you should implement your operator. I think the document that's now also in the references is one that was written by Google uh, for QBuilder, how to best structure it. So this more or less goes back to the TUC, what the exact expectations around this really are. You don't obviously need to answer right now, but um, that would be a good follow up here. So I guess, um, can I just kind of make sure I 100% understand, are you saying that that Kubernetes operator description, SIG app delivery believe that is as good a definition as we need and that's what we should say an operator is? Uh, uh, I think it was more, okay, why, why do we want to have it changed? I think it's a good definition, but it technically does. Okay. And when, when I looked at all the documents, I think it's clear what it does from a very, uh, let's put that away, low level Kubernetes approach. Like we have a COD here, we have a controller here, we have a reconciliation loop. That's all okay, that's what it does. But I think we're um, like looking at the documents that are out there and thinking, okay, I'm a, somebody who wants to build something for an application. It knows me how to do things or it tells me what to do things, but not really from a conceptual level. I think that's what we might be missing. Like how do I best like implement and all uninstall or how do I separate different uh, uh, things that are put into an operator? What should I put in there? What shouldn't I put in there? I think these are the things we, that are not necessarily well defined, but the core concept of how it should be implemented, um, I think is, is well defined in there. Well, in the doc, we also pointed out that some things that are kind of operators like flux are kind of interesting because they're not using a COD. So the whole GitOps space is using a git backed repo that is then more or less applied on Kubernetes. Well, you could argue about everything that's in there is not really an application specific definition. So do we want to call the things actually operators just as they were implemented by controllers? I think what we might need is a clearer distinction. What makes something an operator and what just is a, is just a, a controller here. Well, and is it a request for best practices for an operator when you're talking about those, it seems like, I mean, like you said, operator causes an event to happen. It doesn't necessarily mean it has, you know, that it, you know, it can do upgrades or handle all these other things. I mean, are we looking for like a best practices for operators example, instead of just so, a simple definition of what an operator should be? So yeah, can I, can I jump in here real quick? Um, there are a lot of people who are building operators in a lot of different ways. Some people hand rolling them with client libraries and, and languages I don't even think about on a daily basis, right? And then there are toolkits and frameworks and things like that. I think the original ask came from the TOC for a definition of an operator. And I know people have talked around a lot of different things, but the original ask, if I remember right, was back in a meeting in maybe November or October, I think it might've been November from the TOC for a definition of an operator. And since we can all go in lots of different directions on what should be documented, maybe the TOC could tell us what they want. And I think it was TOC members who may not be present who asked, which of course totally complicates this. Just what I was going to say, I think the, the, the people who have the most knowledge of this area are not here. Um, but yeah, totally, we can take that uh, back to the TSC. We can talk about that on email. And I, my guess is whether or not that um, definition in the Kubernetes documentation is broad enough to then say, well, are all these other things operators or not? I, I suspect that's what we're looking for. It's like a kind of you know litmus test for is a thing an operator or is it something else? Um, 
but let's take that off to email when we can get people who actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, Brian's telling us the general term Kubernetes uses is controller. So I think that still leaves us the question of yeah, in, in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes, I'm sorry, Liz, in the Kubernetes docs, there's actually something that refers to as the operator pattern with motivation yes. examples, things like that. I just dropped the link in. Yeah, I just want to mark this as a follow up here. Uh, on the application delivery landscape, um, so we started to look at the original, obviously, CNCF landscape here. Um, and I think of how we best structure this. Uh, the key question is, do we really need a separate landscape and do we want each individual SIG uh, create their own landscape of tooling according to their models, which might actually complicate things for end users, because then we might end up with 10 different landscapes, or do we want to reuse the existing ones? So one question was maybe using some specific tags um, on it, or maybe even adjust the current categories um, that are in there in the selection. So. Lois, um, I put uh, just a quick comment on that. That I, th I think the sub landscapes are perhaps the most helpful when, when they by and large contain projects that are not already contained in the general landscape because they're a, they're a niche focus and a sub a specific um, area. The the serverless landscape is, in my mind, is an example of that of containing a lot of projects that you that aren't represented today. And so, and so there, and there's some inherent value in understanding that niche space. Matt. Well, I was going to say, I would ask, what's the goal from this? Because what we really don't want is people who are trying to figure out cloud native and understand the projects to see something that reflects our organizational structure, right? We would probably like something that reflects what are they trying to do and help them solve it? So if we're gonna do sub landscapes, it should probably be who needs help and what kind of help and what are they looking for? And then how do we help them surface that information more quickly rather than reflect whatever organizational structure we come up with and change over time? That's a great point. I'm trying to remember the name of that, the, the law that says you always end up reflecting your own organizational structure. Come with um, yeah, um, that is a really great point. I think the key reason for why we want to have, I'm going to say thinking about the landscape is to identify the gaps in it. So um, maybe I, I think we could probably talk all day and all night about whether the boxes on that landscape are the right boxes. Um, but I think that the ask here is for um, the SIGs to help us figure out what's missing in the sub areas that they're aware of. Um, and in particular, to try and, you know, if we know that there are things that people need, rather, it, it's, it all comes back to that question of trying to avoid looking at projects in the order in which they arrive and instead saying, if we have a problem to solve, because there is a gap in this landscape, what are the best projects that we should be looking at to fill that problem or to fill that gap? I don't know if that answered the question. Uh, yeah, I'll just put in an example here, like for app delivery and development, which is our area right now, there are things that are in there like database and streaming and messaging as subcategories, which are not like reflected by what we're looking into right now from supporting from app delivery per se. So that's why I just think that these categories might need some adjustment and we can come up with the proposal how we want to structure it for app delivery. So that's my point. So I don't want to throw the whole landscape overboard, but if we talk about application definition and have database as a first class citizen in there, it's fine. And also for example, for application definition, having telepresence in there feels a bit weird to me as well. And we also found that, for example, Flux is currently missing in the landscape, although it is a CNCF project. So I think that some are I think related to what uh, different SIGs do, and they should look at what the categories, but it makes sense for them. 
or whether they don't. Like for out of security, we don't differentiate between runtime and, and build time security, or whatever might make sense there. Um, uh, so we, we will look into how we can classify the existing projects that's ongoing work uh, that we're looking into. I'm just bringing it up maybe for the other six chairs here as well to look into the categories, whether maybe some uh, tweaking and tuning of the text might make sense there. So I think it makes sense to have a database category, don't get me wrong, but it's not really application delivery uh, related here. Yeah, last but not least, air gap environments. This was something from KubeCon. We had a great presentation by uh, Jeremy. And also some other people saying, well, we do similar things and we want to work more on this. Uh, they'll now ask by the mailing list of who actually wants to work and contribute to this because we don't want to make this a JIT driven, but rather a community driven engagement on um, support for deploying Kubernetes applications to air gapped environments. For all of those who are, all of you who haven't seen that presentation, as a recording from Jeremy, it's I think actually a very good introduction to that topic. And yeah, that's it. That's great. I wonder whether that's also worth raising with um, Cheryl and the end user group, who I'm particularly thinking that you know there's all those finance end users, and I'm sure there are other groups as well who are quite likely to be operating in. End user in uh, air gapped environments, so they might also oh, yeah, have. Yeah, we uh, during KubeCon we had require uh, requests from the, the telco space because they are deploying Kubernetes to obviously hardware environments that are by definition air gapped. But yeah, distributing it, uh, I think, is a good idea. So is this a uh, is this a new working group or is this a a document? I, I guess what do we what are we setting up here? I think it's a best practice document. That's where I would start it. So for us, the point is just, you're in KubeCon, we got a lot of interest and we have people working on it. Uh, we just don't simply want to inherit this as chairs. So we want to reach out to people who's willing to actively contribute to this document because otherwise we, the chairs will be uh, doing all the work there. That's why I was saying yeah. to the mailing is, hey, are you interested in providing actual best practices? What you're doing in there? What you're missing in there? And so forth, and also driving this 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 forward. But it might turn out maybe into a, a a working group as it moves forward. But first, we really want to test the borders on interest. We have done some initial work, which I found uh, actually quite interesting, um, especially on how because one of the questions we got it's everything we have right now is great for packaging, but how do we get the container into an offline environment? And there are actually ways how to get a container into an offline environment. But as a lot of people were asking, it might not be documented uh, that well enough so that they easily find something to do with this. Great. Okay. So is that, it sounds like there's some work already ongoing. Is that something you want to maybe search around the TOC and, and maybe some other groups like Cheryl's groups and, and call for participation? Call for participation. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So uh, I don't know whether we have a formal process there, but yeah. I don't think we do have a formal process. I think we just. Yeah, I think the networking, uh, definitely the telco working group would be one that had interest, maybe financial services and who wants to work and who has done something. And also share the initial work that is already available there. Great, right. uh, yeah. Okay, there's, yeah. And Matt's making the point of reaching out to the CNAB folks. Ah, is that one of their use cases? Hmm. Well, yeah, Jeremy was working on CNAB before he joined the end there, so that's, that's how this came along. Okay, thank you. Is that everything? That, I see there's a couple more slides. No. I could just the landscape examples, so that's... Ah, I see, okay. And the, the categories one, so this is just for... Assuming we had slides, this would have just helped illustrate the use of the case we want to make here. That's fine. All right. Uh, the next one is runtime, where uh, the vote is ongoing. I've seen a lot of votes going past on that today, so... I'm guessing that's pretty close to passing. Do we have anybody from SIG Runtime here? Ricardo, hello. 
You're on mute. I'm on mute. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So yeah. So um, the vote is out. So I haven't synced up with uh, Quinton yet. So uh, I'm gonna sync up with them. We haven't had a meeting yet officially. Uh, so uh, we, we're gonna have one next week and gonna talk about what we're gonna do next. Um, so yeah, the document is out. Uh, vote. Uh, uh, we have a tech lead. Uh, uh, Klaus Ma already, so we're gonna uh, um, so we're gonna go and try to find some more people. Uh, and there was a question uh, about SigNode and how this is gonna interact with SigNode. And so I think SigNode is gonna stay the same way it is, and uh, we're just gonna, or as as a runtime uh, Sig, we're gonna interact with them as far as uh, how these runtimes will uh, interface with Kubernetes and um, how they implement the container runtime interface to, you know, uh, so uh, that the kubelet can talk to them. Uh, and yeah, that, that's it for the updates. I mean, we're, we're just getting started. So. so I guess questions? that's also a call for participation as well. Exactly. Yeah. Any right. Questions? Actually, I think we, we probably should send around a, a list to at least the TOC and maybe a broader group. I don't know, maybe something on Kubernetes discussion or I don't know what, what else, maybe some Slack channels to let people know that these SIGs are now in place and... And uh, have more yeah. people participate, correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amy, maybe you can uh, make sure we do that. Yep. Okay, uh, is that all the SIGs? No, SIG Network, Lee, you were here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't mean to add a ditto to signaling, uh, soliciting interest and topics, but that's, well, that's, that's one of the things that we're actively doing right now. And um, uh, so there's, a, there's a tweet out there about uh, asking people for topics they'd like for us to address. Um, I don't think that that's because there's a lack of things to address, but rather we're looking to start on the, you know, prioritize the list based on people that are showing up based on the interests that they're signaling about which topics to, to take on first. So uh, as of, so, so in terms of this SIG itself, we had been voted in, as I understand, probably a back in November and, and we're sort of official and, and off and running today. So we've, we did have a, just as a reminder last time that we gave an update, we had a, uh, an intro and a deep dive at, at KubeCon. Uh, we just had our, what would I would say, probably our first uh, healthy discussion um, last, uh, online, you know, um, last uh, December 19th, it's last Thursday. So we've got an upcoming meeting um, this, this Thursday. We're asking for people to fill in their topics of interest. Um, during our last meeting, we had um, two upcoming agenda items. Uh, one is a, um, a schedule for a, a review of uh, Meshery as a, a candidate for Sandbox. And then the other one is uh, a presentation and discussion of the service mesh interface, SMI. Um, and I'm not sure that that's uh, as, as a potential proposed sandbox project just yet. I think that there's a number of people that, um, including myself around the project that um, ultimately are, are pr pressing, you know, adding pressure to go that way. Um, and so we'll, so we'll see. Um, so, but that's the, those are two upcoming agenda items. Um, another one was the, of the, folks that had shown up for last call, we had a um, representation of, of a couple of home, uh, a couple of the projects that, that are in, in this SIG's home room or, or home projects for the SIG, I guess, if we can <laughs> use that. Um, but one, so one of those was Network Service Mesh and of the folks there that, that I think they also participate in the telecom user group and we're mentioning some uh, white papers that, that, that they have going on um, around cloud native network functions and some definitions that they're doing. And so we had already called out the TUG, the telecom user group, as 
um, as a group to int have intentional relations with. Uh, and, and it organically came up in, in our first call. And so um, we'd long, uh, there'd long been a desire to put out a white paper around to, to help with clarity on some definitions of terms and to hopefully put out some best practices around cloud native networking. And so the, the telecom user group, I think, has already um, started down this road. So we're uh, hopefully we'll have some discussions next Thursday about those papers. Uh, I think that's that's the update. Great. Any questions for Lee on the SIG network? All right, just before we move on, I know last time we had a meeting, I think Matt Young, who I can see, you were throwing your hat into the ring regarding uh, SIG observability. I don't know if you've, you and Amy have yeah. had any chance to uh, sync up about that. Yeah, I was off the grid hard over the holidays until yesterday. So for our next meeting, uh, I'll have uh, likely a PR. I kind of wanted to see uh, the ebb and flow. This is my second meeting, so. Uh, I want to listen first, but yes, I'm still quite interested, and um, I'm not sure what the right forum is to to see who else might be interested in launching it uh, or collaborating on the initial proposal. Great, I think uh, Matt Klein, if I recall, is the kind of proposed uh, TOC liaison. So we need to make sure that um, that you two are kind of hooked up together. So. Um, sure. Amy, can you can you make sure that Matt and and Matt and Matt yep. get introduced? <laughs> cool. Yep, he's not with us today, but uh, to be able to make it right. Indeed. Yeah. All right. So is it is it not? Um, I think Jeff from Intuit, who I was going to follow up with this week. Oh, maybe it was Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's, it could be both. Also okay. good. Could be both. All right. Fine. Yeah. We'll watch for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, it'll all change in, in the next couple of months when we have an election anyway. So, Okay, um, so the last, uh, actually, no, I think there are a couple of things still on the agenda. One was sort of just to do a little update on the processes. Um, one was the Sandbox annual review process, which I think, I don't know if that's actually been merged or, or not but it looked pretty close to being merged. Uh, yeah, it's not merged, but I think we've addressed all the comments in that. So um, I think unless we get any more comments, we should probably, I don't know if we need to vote on this um, documentation of the process, but I really want to start getting these sandbox projects, getting their annual reviews. Um, it's been, I don't think any project has ever had an annual review yet. So I really want to get this going. So uh, yeah, we'll get that merged. And then Amy, if you can start lining up the sandbox projects and telling them that their, their reviews are uh, expected. And the other, sorry. Quick question. How should, uh, there's a couple of those that I'm most interested in even being a fly on the wall as we're, for example, Cortex. I think was slated for January. I saw in notes somewhere last month. Uh, we're, we're actually rolling that out uh, over the next quarter. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in just being a fly on the wall. Uh, I don't know, are notes posted or is there a calendar? How do we find out when we should uh, dial in and, and listen in? Well, it's funny you should ask about Cortex because that was my um, any other business item that I had uh, noted. So, because um, Cortex are on the, they want to go from sandbox to incubation. Um, and I think they've already raised a PR, raised an issue around that. Um, yes, there's one. We need to figure out who's going to do the due diligence for that. And the question is, should we have the new putative SIG observability do that, lead that due diligence, uh, which uh, I think if, I mean, it sounds like, you know, you're kind of enthusiastic to get started. So um, I think it would probably yeah, make sense to put that into. I had some yeah. folks, that's what the Grafana folks said um, at, at reInvent and uh, I've been uh, talking yeah yes we're, we're quite interested great 
Great. I mean, I think it makes sense to uh, try to get the observability SIG formed, um, but it would make a lot of sense to get your help as a SIG on on doing that due diligence and uh, brilliant. Okay, so that solves that problem. <laughs> um, the other bit of process that we've been working on, and I don't think, Michelle, you're not here, are you? Uh, no, so Michelle's not here, and I'm sure this is, uh, you know, one of the things that is, uh, you know, we're going to jump back into with both feet now that we're back from holidays, but it's that whole uh, flowchart proposal that, um, that Sarah originally started on, and I know Michelle's been doing some work on. Uh, but I just wanted to, to flag that up as something that we are still working on and want to make progress on. All right, so uh, with that, has anybody got anything else we should be discussing today? We seem to be early. I'm happy to talk about the proposal that I have in mind, if you want. Ooh, Paris, yes, do go. As I saw you there, I thought I, wonder, I didn't want to put you on the spot, so I'm very happy for you to volunteer. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> No, it's all good. Um, this is something that I talked to Liz and Michelle and a couple other folks briefly about. Uh, I've recently sent it to Amy and some other CNCF folks to look at, but I'd like to propose a, a SIG for contributor experience uh, and community relations with the stakeholders being end users and how they can best uh, interact with upstream communities in CNCF's portfolio, as well as help the portfolio projects uh, grow contributors, find better automation tools, and things like that. Uh, coming off the learnings of Kubernetes and also our failure stories. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm the co-chair of Kubernetes Contributor Experience. I've been doing this for about two years. Um, so I just kind of wanted to see if if others thought that this would be a worthwhile, valuable SIG for CNCF. I can happily share the charter, um, like a proposed charter that I have. That sounds good. I see Matt's hand. Sounds uh, awesome. I have set up something similar in the Node.js Foundation. So uh, yeah, it's been really useful. Yeah, yeah, I think this is good. You know, as projects want to go from sandbox to incubating to graduated, they need to have contributors, maintainers from different companies. And quite frankly, a lot of maintainers aren't good at engaging with contributors or helping them come on board. Because once you're in the club, you totally know everything that's going on. How do you explain that to somebody new? Yeah. And as your project gets more complicated, it's even more to onboard, which is why it was great for Kubernetes to dive so hard into this because it's one of the most complicated things. Uh, and, and I think a lot of our projects could probably use that and not getting more people involved is a pain point, especially for some of the sandbox projects. So helping them get better at this, I think will help the quality of our projects. Um, if anybody's interested in seeing the proposal, just go ahead and either ping me or Amy and we can ship that out and around. I think if you're happy to do so, maybe you just send it around to the TOC mailing list. Yeah, I think we're we're to that here. Okay. I mean, it's, it's very draft like very, you know, it has JavaScript commenting in it. <laughs> so yeah, just heads up there. Very work in progress, but sure. It's a universal need across all the projects. And to Matt's point, it's not what most people who initiate a project are creating a project to do. And so as such, it's a secondary or tertiary focus, but it's super critical to, to every project. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of, I feel like, learnings and things that I'm trying to implement now in Kubernetes where it's like, wow, I should have done this a long time ago. Or I, had I known this before, we could have done this from the ground up. Um, a lot of the processes that you try to do retroactively are very difficult when you have 35,000 contributors already. <laughs> uh, so a lot of things that uh, we can share. And I would love to almost make this group uh, sort of a, not, not necessarily like a council in itself, but, uh, you know, having a rep from every project that wants to do intentional contributor experience, 
uh, and things like that would really, I think, help the community at large uh, get some standards and things. Like even the definition of a contributor uh, is, you know, subject to many opinions. So on that particular point, that's actually a point of interest um, for me and for, for projects that I'm involved in is, mm -hmm. um, well, is the definition of something of a contributor ladder. If yep. you if, if ladders yeah. that is literally I think that's the one uh, the one piece of Kubernetes artifacts that uh, is amazing that will live on for a long time is the is the ladder uh, and I would love to get that more to get that adopted more into other projects uh, intentionally saying what the next step is and someone's you know uh, open source contributor journey is uh, is essential, especially with uh, diversity and um, making sure people understand what's next for them. So, uh, yeah. and then gaining trust and building trust with your maintainers and things like that. So that's the that whole like how do I build trust element to contributing. And hopefully, a healthy recognition of the weight associated with non-code contributions. Um, as yeah. So just for my own um, edification, there is a contributor ladder defined within the Kubernetes project yeah. today. Okay. Yeah. You know, given your employer and some of your relationships, do you know is that same co contribution ladder being looked at by the Knative and Istio projects? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I believe they are building a contributor ladder. I can't speak for those communities, but just from questions that I've had and questions that I've been um, that folks have been asking me lately, definitely. Um, I Not even just Knative and Istio, a ton of other Google projects, and then also not even just Google. I, Dan, I know Dan just said uh, something about ComComs, but like I work with Node.js and, and a lot of other projects outside of our ecosystem too on things like contributor ladder stuff. So that's definitely something that, like I said, all, can, all open source projects should have, not just cloud native. I think this is absolutely wonderful and um, you know we we often talk about you know what can the CNCF do to help projects and I think this is going to be a really big boost you know it'll, it, to be able to learn from some of the things that Kubernetes have done I think this is fantastic so much 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 appreciated brilliant all right uh, anyone else want to volunteer to change the world for the better it's okay, we're all changing the world for the better. Brilliant, okay, you get seven minutes back in your day. Thank you very much, everyone. Good to see everyone, bye all. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.